What's going on everybody and welcome to a Kiwi tutorial series. If you don't know what Kiwi is, it's a cross-platform GUI development library. The idea is that you can code it in one place, one time, and it just works everywhere on Windows, Mac, Linux, as well as on mobile with like Android and iOS. Uh, it's been about four years since I looked into Kiwi. Curious about the changes, curious if like packaging and deploying to Linux, I'm sorry, not Linux, um, Android and iOS, like on mobile, Curious to see how that works out now after it's been some time. It was pretty clunky before. So to get started, uh, head over to akibi.org, go to download, and grab the download instructions for whatever operating system you intend to program on. This isn't for running it. It's just simply where, where do you want to develop your Kiwi app. So I'm on Windows, so I'd go here, grab these things. There's some stuff that's uh, like you, you could, this is optional. Um, Kiwi examples also optional, but if you like Kiwi, I would suggest coming back and grabbing the examples. Uh, just so you can see how other people have done things and get ideas about how you might want to do cool things with your Kiwi app. Also, check out the API reference if you want to learn more. The API is huge. There's a lot of stuff here, <laughs> okay? So just kind of glance through that, get ideas, again, about things you might want to make with Kiwi, if you like Kiwi. So... Uh, with that, go ahead and install all the things you want, pause the video if you need to, and then uh, continue when you're ready to go. We're going to start making our first Kiwi app ever. In the series, uh, what I'd like to do is make a chat app with Kiwi. So the idea is uh, you can, taking from our sockets tutorial, we want to be able to uh, create a chat app that can work on our phone and our desktop and all that kind of stuff. And so we're going to use Kiwi for the UI aspect of that. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, to use Kiwi, no surprise, uh, we're going to import Kiwi without the capital K. Uh, from Kiwi.app, we're going to import <clears throat> app. Uh, this is just your base app class. Every app is going to have it. Uh, then, from Kiwi.uix.label, we are going to import label. This is just so we can add some text. Then we're going to say kiwi.require, and this is just so we can make sure that people are using the same version. Again, this is just mostly for development purposes. So kiwi uh, require 1.10.1. 1. Uh, pay attention to what version of kiwi you installed. So as soon as you install it, you'll see what the version was. So mine is 1.10.1. 1. Yours might be something different. Um, also, when you do install Kiwi, you could always do pip install Kiwi equals or double equals 1.10.1 1. if you need to get the exact same version of me because something's not working and you're not sure if it's you or if it's just the version. Okay, continuing. Uh, so, Kiwi require done. Now, let's go ahead and Epic App. And Epic App is going to inherit from App. Can I get away with that? I don't know if my uh, Pep 8 linter is happy with that or not. Looks like it is. Okay, class app, uh, or class epic app, inheriting from app. What do we want to do? We are going to run the build method, and the build method is pretty much your initialization method, right? It, it's your initialization method without being an initialization method because app already has one, uh, but you'll see in a moment we have to supersede that anyways pretty quickly. <laughs> anyway, it's your initialization method. So we're going to build, and all we're going to do is return uh, label uh, hey there, and I don't remember if this is the first, I'm assuming text is the first parameter, but just in case, go ahead and just pass text equals hey there. And then your usual if name equals, <laughs> does anybody know what dunder, dunder, magic dunder is? <laughs> Fascinating. Anybody knows what the heck that is? Let me know, man. Okay, if name equals main, uh, epic app dot run don't forget your parentheses in both cases otherwise it's not going to work very well okay let's go ahead and save that and i'm going to run that in a, another window because i don't think it's going to work out in sublime i can test it in sublime let's just try it real quick i just don't think it's going to work yeah i don't see it here so i'm going to go ahead and exit that tools cancel the build and then what I'm going to do is come over to Kiwi Tutorial here, open the command prompt, and do pi-37 kiwi app.py. Go ahead and run that. If you get any errors, they'll be displayed here, so you can uh, hopefully Google them or ask, you know, ask in the comments. 
Anyway, here is our app. Awesome. One thing to note right out of the gate is you can resize it <clears throat> and it just kind of just works. And that's kind of the point is it works on many different screens or on a phone. If you were to rotate your phone, it'll fix itself and all that. So um, cool. All right. So cool, but not that cool. So now what we're going to do is actually start building the first page of our app because this is pretty boring up to this point. So we're going to say uh, from kiwi.uix.grid layout, we're going to import grid layout. And then uh, we want to bring in text input. So from kiwi.uix.text input, we're going to import text input. So trying to make a chat app, the first step to this chat you know, server app thing is we need to input at least a username for sure, but also in our case, we can customize the port and IP. So really the first page of this app needs to be like, you know, uh, IP, port, and username, you know, um, so for all those things. And then probably like a button to connect. And then when it's connecting, um, then switch to the chat app page, right? Which will just contain the chat history and then a field for you to chat in, okay? So um, so we're gonna use the grid layout. This is just so we can organize the widgets and stuff, right? And then text input so we can input some text. And then label, um, we already have that. So text input, text from the user, label so we can just put some text on the screen basically. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is make a new class. So rather than epic app just simply returning a label, it's actually uh, what we'd like it to do is return <clears throat> the connect page. Now we need to define the connect page. So uh, class connect page and connect page is going to inherit from the grid layout. And then one thing to keep in mind, first of all, there's many layouts, but also to further customize layouts, you can like in the case of a grid, it's obviously a grid, <laughs> surprise. Uh, but you can like make certain cells of that grid, a certain percentage width or height uh, and then also you can add layouts inside of layouts. So uh, just keep that in mind that you have lots of options there. Anyway, connect page, grid layout, awesome. Uh, we're gonna define our init, init method here uh, and pass self here, don't forget that. And the first thing that we wanna do is actually run the init method of grid layout. So we're going to say super uh, in it and uh, self and quarks quarks <laughs> one day I'm gonna get it and then we need to add the quarks here as well okay so if you don't totally understand that that's okay we've actually really never covered the super in it but basically all you're you're saying is super so you're referring to grid layout run the init method okay um, and why might we want to do that? Well, John, I'm so glad that you asked. Let's just copy pasta. Uh, let me just run a test up. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I want this one to be modified, a test up high. Uh, we'll just open that. And let's say you had two classes. You had class one. Uh, and in fact, uh, let's do define in it self. And then all we're going to do is print uh, one. Okay, let's say you did that. Uh, and then let me just copy this, come down here, paste. We're going to call this two, two. And let's say two inherits from class one. So that's your parent class, right? Uh, let's just say we made a two object. You'd see here, it just prints two, right? Um, but sometimes you'd actually want the init method of the inherited from class, otherwise known as the parent class. Um, you want that to run as well. So the way that you would do that is accessing the super method. Uh, and then we're going to say super uh, init um, self, or not self, let's see, uh, super init. There we go. Um, and boom. Obviously, you don't need to pass self here. That's just understood. Okay, so um, now that's how you're gonna run one and two. So you run the initialization method of both classes. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. Okay, so uh, back to 
the regular world. Um, cool. So the connect page basically is going to have two columns because you're going to have some text on the left and then the field input on the right. So it'll be like, you know, IP and then you enter the IP port colon, right? You enter the port username colon, enter the username that you want to use, right? So we need two columns. So we're going to say self dot calls equals two. And then we're going to start adding some widgets. So self dot add underscore widget. This widget will be a label widget uh, where the text equals IP colon. Then what we're going to say is uh, self dot IP equals the text input. And then we'll pass multi line equals false here. And then uh, we're going to say self dot add widget, self dot add widget, self dot IP. So really, we could say this. So imagine you've got two columns and then infinite rows. So boom, you've got IP colon, just a label, it just says IP colon. And then right next to it, it says, um, basically you've got this text input widget um, added there. So you can just boom, in input some text. So widget number one, widget number two, we've exceeded two columns. We now are on row number two, easy. So now we're gonna basically do uh, the same thing again with port and for username. So I'm actually just going to copy this Paste, paste, IP port, and then username. And then we're gonna say here, port username, copy this, pasta there, copy that, pasta that. All right, that looks pretty beautiful. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, is it gonna run? Hey man, there's only one way to find out. Let's uh, do this, save that. Um, okay, so let me run it. And just for the record, I probably won't always have this on the screen. If I say I'm running it, I'm just doing pi37 keeviapp.py. If you're on Mac OS, I believe to run it, it's kiwi and then the file name, just for the record. <gasps> Did I pass self? I'd probably pass self to this. I really wanted to keep doing that. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to do that either. I'm so used to just hitting Control B. Okay, rerunning it. Okay, I know Python, I swear. Okay, so <laughs> there's our app. Okay, so just in case I, I zoomed through that too quickly, I did the exact same thing I tried to do. I'm just so used to like, anytime I in it, I just pass self because like you never, you never actually run in it, right? <laughs> Except when you're doing the super, but you never actually intentionally run in it. So literally every time I do in it, it's just like uh, ingrained in me self. Uh, anyway, cool. So here's our app. And again, pretty nice that you can just kind of continue resizing it and it just works, right? Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, now what we want to have is probably one more row uh, and have like some sort of submit button where you click on that and then we got a handle for that. So one, we need buttons. We need to start handling for events. We got all kinds of stuff that we got to figure out. And I'm going to save that for the next video. So a uh, quick shout out to my recent channel sponsors, members, awesome people, Clark, Uma, Kampf, Dracoducks, and Digier. Thank you guys very much for your support. You guys are amazing. All right, everybody. I will see you guys in the next video.